This is James Taylor, and you're listening to The Creative Life. The Creative Life podcast is a show created for you, the creative. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's a musician, writer, artist, designer, performer, educator, or creative entrepreneur. They share their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, their insights, and much, much more. This episode is sponsored by C-School, the online school for creativity training. If you'd like to unleash your creative potential and access a free creativity blueprint training series, then just head over to c.school. That's www.c.school for your free training series. In today's episode, I speak with Cyril Courtleven. We talk about creative thinking, thought leadership, and stage props for speakers. Enjoy this episode. Hey, it's James Taylor, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Cyril Courtleven. Cyril is a global speaker and author on creativity and change, a digital nomad who believes in inspiring others, changing mindsets, and in the idea that less is beautiful. He is the author of four books, and when not speaking on stages, you might find him at the Burning Man Festival or even climbing up a ladder, as we're going to discover. And it's my great pleasure to have Cyril with us today. So welcome, Cyril. Thank you, James. Very happy to be in the show. So share with everyone what's going on in your life just now. Yeah, at this moment, uh, I'm, I'm mainly working as, as a keynote speaker. Uh, and at this moment, I'm really working on a new book. It will be called uh, The Change Mindset. It will be, I call it a book gazine. So it will be a mix of uh, a book and a magazine because I don't like boring books. So I think a book should also be very attractive to to grab it and uh, and to read it. So that's the... The main focus, yeah, in the previous weeks and probably also in the in the next weeks. I'm not on stage. Um, yeah, and I'm, at this moment I'm also following a program. I attended the Global Speaking Summit a few weeks ago, and I also went to Australia for the Professional Speakers of Australia, and they had quite a cool program. It's called Boost. How can you give a boost to your sales and marketing? And I'm doing already quite good, I guess, but how can I go from good to great? So those are the two elements that uh, take up most of my time and energy at this moment. So you speak on creativity and also on on change as well, but how did you first get started in becoming a a professional speaker? Yeah, I studied economics. so That's quite a different uh, area, but I was not sure what I wanted to do with my life. So I joined a group that was kind of a management trainee uh setting so for two years i worked in four different companies and we got quite a lot of training and one of those trainings was creative thinking and at that moment i really i didn't have a clue creative thinking what can we do with it but i think that same evening i checked out if there was a company an organization doing something in that domain and i discovered that in belgium belgium is a very small country uh, but there was one organization called the Center of Development of Creative Thinking. And the only thing that they did was giving training and facilitating brainstorming sessions. So we followed the training with them. And that's already, I think, 16 years ago. And since then, I've been yeah, doing some stuff in the domain of creativity innovation, gave a lot of training, facilitated a lot of brainstorming sessions. And the last four or five years, uh, really focusing on speaking. Now, one of the things I, I was reading uh, a blog post that you put up the other day, I thought was very interesting. Uh, we often hear this this phrase thought leaders, people talking about thought leaders all the time, that speakers are thought leaders or or authors are thought leaders. But you have a slightly different take on it. And instead of, of, of thinking necessarily about uh, I am not your thought leader, um, you, have a, you have a slightly different perspective on what your role there is and what you're really great at doing when you're up there on stage. Yeah, and it's true because... What is a thought leader? You know, everybody can call himself or herself uh, a thought leader. For me, that's a person who comes up with, with new stuff, who is a trendsetter. Uh, and I looked at my, my, my own track record and what I've done. I haven't, yeah, I have my own company, but I'm, I don't feel that I'm an entrepreneur or that I really come up with the new stuff. So I rather call myself a simplifier or a simplifier I look in the world what's happening and I bring it together so also if you look at my different books 
it's not new new stuff what what you get in there, but you get inspiration from from a lot of different areas. I try to bring those kind of things together. Of course, I have my own sauce or or my own style what I put over it, but I don't have to you know I don't claim that I'm the next thought leader or something. I rather like to make things very simple. What I'm noticing is that that's resonating also with my audience. They, you know, they're a little bit tired of the next trend structure who comes with a new model and new things. People also like how can we simplify it and, and what's an easy, practical way to do it. And that's more the area that I like to focus on. Is it, it reminds me a little bit of, I think, of like great uh, philosophers like Bertrand Russell, for example. Um, and what he was very good at, he, he did, didn't necessarily come up with brand new philosophical ideas, but he was brilliant at being able to tie together. And you you had kind of curate and simplify the ideas of other kind of thought leaders in the worlds of you know great great philosophers. And actually, that that, that was a, a really key skill because... Some of these other philosophers, their work would be really difficult to kind of get your head around. But he came along and he, he really helped kind of simplify it for, for everyone. So everyone could understand some of these big concepts. Yeah, nice. I also like the, the fact the curator, you, know, you, you look what stuff out there and then bring it in, in a very simple way. Uh, oh, nice. One one of the other blog posts I, I was reading that you did the other day, I thought was quite an interesting time. You were talk, it, was a, it was about your last moment on planet Earth. <laughs> so this was going to go into this idea like, you know, we all, uh, you know, maybe once a year we have that kind of at the end of the year, we'll do that big setting of goals for the year ahead. You took it in a slightly different, a slightly more creative direction. Can you describe what you, you did in that process? Yeah, what I, what I did, uh, instead of going one year ahead, I went many, many years ahead. I hope so, that it will be many, many years. But what I've done, I imagined what would be my last day? You know, if I would have to spend my last day here on Earth, and then I imagine I always said that I want to become uh, 100 years old, and on the day when I'm when I'm getting 100, you know, that's also a nice da- nice day to die because 100 years is is long enough. Uh, so what I've tried to do was more looking forward. Okay, if I'm at that stage, and hopefully I will still be healthy and and knowing what I'm doing. But how would that day look like? What what would be a perfect vision that that I could have? So I imagine myself standing in front of a group of people and sharing all kind of insights in a very fun, very, you know, relaxed way. And I got quite some interesting uh, feedback from different people. Some, Some found it a little bit shocking. He said, ah, oh, I don't want to think about that day, but, you know, if your last day on Earth is beautiful, wow, you know, of course, I hope that the previous days also were, were really good. But uh, so we, I tried to look from it a little bit, looking a bit further in the future. And uh, it helped me to, to frame my vision. And of course, it was a little bit fun and I wanted to trigger people a little bit. But, but it was a, a real exercise and it helped me to take steps at this moment where do we want to go in the next years i, I love that i mean it's, it, it really is taking the idea of beginning with the end in mind to its logical <laughs> conclusion uh-huh. as well as really kind of pushing it pushing out there and it, i guess what that forces you also to do is to is to have a much more kind of strategic view a long a much longer view of your life rather than we get so caught up in all the you know the things the day-to-day tactics of of, of life um and so I, I love this idea of just kind of pushing things out maybe a little bit further than it is necessarily comfortable for you uh to, kind of, to make you kind of uh kind of, reass- kind of reassess and assess what you're doing with your life um so you mentioned you you went to that that creative tr- uh, thinking training and that really got you interested in this whole area of, of creativity today where do you go for your new ideas where do you go for inspiration and how do you begin to kind of start developing those ideas yeah um thanks to my my job i don't know if i want to call it a job it's it's more my my life it's it's really intertwined with my my personal life uh, i can travel quite a lot what i always try to do is spend a few extra days if I'm in the, in a new country or a different country. So I've already been several times to Australia, New Zealand. I love those countries. It's from Belgium, it's, and probably for most countries, it's almost the, the other side of the world. 
But instead of going just for you know a few days, I try to stay a little bit longer. And that helps me to connect with people that I maybe met uh, during a speech or uh, this time I followed a few conferences myself. And, and that really helps to have those kind of conversations in a relaxed atmosphere. I think most of my inspiration is coming from, from those areas. And then certainly when you go into new areas and new cultures, a lot of things are so different of the culture that I'm used to that that triggers me. Hey, but why are we doing things in this way? And most of the time, that's the starting idea of, hey, wait a minute. If you look from this perspective to that topic, what would happen if you look from this perspective? And and, and then a story comes up and... Yeah, though that's most of the time the way how I work to, for example, now with writing my book, the, the different topics. Uh, so talking to a lot of people and, and just give yourself a little bit of free space to walk around in, in new environments. So as you've been going along in this this creative journey, can you tell us about a time maybe when you you worked on something, a project or a speech or something you were doing, you gave it your heart and your soul, but for whatever reason, it just didn't quite work out like you'd hoped. And more importantly, what were the lessons that you took from that experience? Yeah, maybe one of the things you already mentioned that I've written four books, and, and that's true. But to be honest, I, I didn't really write a book on the topic that I'm talking about right now, because I was always thinking, but there are already so many books around the topic creativity, innovation, change. Why does the world need another book on that topic? So what I've done, I've written uh, four books, one on improvisation, one on the topic time, one uh, less is beautiful, and they are all connected for me. There is absolutely a very clear link with creativity and change, but I always was looking at the, at the borders of it. And now what I'm noticing is uh, one of the things that, that I find quite hard. A lot of speakers, they say, oh, and they get extra revenue of selling books. For me, it's sometimes so hard to sell one book. But you understand the reason? Because all of my books are a little bit at the, at the side of my normal topic. So when I show those books to, to an audience, they think, hey, but wait a minute, you haven't talked about this topic. So that's one big lesson that I've learned. You know, there, if you write a book or something or, or your content make sure that you have something that really connects or resonates with the story that you're telling. Mm. And I'm writing the book right now, but that, that was a big lesson for me. And it, it took me four books. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And why, why do you think that was? Why did, because you've obviously had this, this thread that's been going through all, all your speeches and, and everything you do in your, your other writings. Is it just taking you this amount of time just to let things sort and sift in your head? And so you could work out the frameworks and, what you really wanted to pass on in a book because a, a book always feels unlike a keynote a keynote is something it's a, it happens in time and space and then it's gone it's ephemeral in that way but a book always feels like it's going to be around for a long long time uh, yes. so w w was was that what was kind of holding you back from putting the things that you were maybe speaking to audiences down in, into the written word yeah a little bit but also the fact that i was thinking but there is already so much it was my own assumption or my own idea killer like like to call it uh, I was thinking there are already so many books in that topic around. Why should I write another book? Who's waiting for, for my stuff? But what I'm noticing more and more, and afterwards I'm quite happy that I've written those books, certainly the, the last is beautiful. It really reminded me, several. it doesn't matter if, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have already written on a certain topic. If you can bring it in a different way and you can make it, practical and accessible for a new target group wow go for it so it's it's maybe more that i was fighting with my my own assumptions than than because i had i have enough ideas or 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 inputs to to have written the book before but i think it was more my own assumptions why is somebody waiting uh, for a book in this topic and it feels that the, the right moment is now so uh, uh. So in creativity and, and uh, innovation, we often talk about this idea, the light bulb moment, the aha moment, like that, that moment when something just kind of 
clicks it just it, it kind of all come it comes to mind to the forefront of your mind can you tell us about an insight or a light bulb an aha moment in your own life in your own creative journey yeah you mentioned already uh, in the beginning i don't know if you've been to the burning man to the festival no I've, I've never been i've got a lot of my friends have been to that festival and he says a life-changing experience <laughs> i would i would say i've been to that festival three times it's already i think four or five years ago since the last time but that was for me quite a it was a life-changing uh, moment and the reason was because people are so open there and, and there are a lot of stories around the burning man but for me it was Wow, it was, how would you call it, the, the Walhalla of inspiration. You know, people were all dressed up. You had all those artworks. And what I like that it was just for a limited time frame. So for one week, people gathered. They gave all their inspiration. I had so many interesting talks with people and, and sometimes you even had no clue what that person was doing in, in a day job but we, we you could connect on a certain topic and, and it, it felt like that you were talking to a friend you know that you already know for for 20 years you could immediately go very deep in, in the conversations and the inspiration of the light bulb came afterwards that why do we need a setting like the burning man to allow or to give herself permission to have those kind of conversations, to, to be extreme creative, because apparently it's allowed there. But if you look at the business world, a lot of things are still so boring and, and we make things very complex. So that was for me kind of signal so we'll go a little bit more extreme. And, and I know there are a lot of people who, who go further than me, but dare to go a bit more extreme and be open. You know, we are all human beings. And and, and if you can touch them on, on the right spots, people can become aware. And, and you don't have to follow all the rules that are out there. No, break some rules. You know, first know the rules, but then break them and play a little bit with them. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the insights that I got from Burning Man. Now, one of the interesting things about you on one of your speeches, I know, is that you have a slightly unusual prop that you require for the event organizers to provide you with. I know you've had difficulty sometimes in getting that prop, but uh, maybe just t tell us what that, that prop is, if there's any good stories behind that. And also, what what is the role in the prop? Because I know we have a lot of speakers listening to this. We also have a lot of performers, live artists, actors uh, that listen to this podcast as well, where props are something, or it's something they're thinking about using a lot more in their shows and in their, their performances. So what is the prop that you use and why do you use it? Yeah, and one of the things, one of my presentations is called Ladders and Bananas, a survival kit for professionals and change. And I immediately start with a ladder and a, and a banana as a prop. And it, and it comes a little bit from the story that I just shared to dare to go a bit more extreme. At one moment, I saw a, a cartoon of a, a ladder on top of a banana peel. You know, they were standing and people were walking over the ladder to avoid falling over the banana peel. And at that moment, I was thinking, I, I checked uh, with with the, the, the person who, who drew the, the cartoon, and he asked, can I use it? And that was fine. But then I was thinking, so, dare to go a bit more extreme, wouldn't it be very cool to have, you know, a banana peel, that's still quite easy, but also have a ladder on stage? And now I've done it uh, the last year, I think I've done it, 40 or 50 times and 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 people love it it's it's almost and you have to watch out a little bit it's it's, it's becoming a kind of signature almost for me oh you're the ladder guy or you're the banana guy and i use so instead of just using a cartoon or a drawing on a slide i've used the ladder and and the ladder come back, comes back a few times so we also use it a little bit in a creative way so instead of just in the beginning, so I immediately when I come up, I'm eating a banana peel. The banana peel falls on the floor and, and instead of picking it up, I do a little bit of role play that human resources comes in and they ask, oh, wait a minute, do you have the right skills, you know, to pick up a banana? Uh, is this in your job description? So what I do, I'll, I'll 
play it out a little bit in extremes, how I see that uh, the business world has evolved with a lot of rules and a lot of patterns. But then at one moment, I bring on the ladder, I walk over the ladder, and that's quite hilarious, you know, because the whole audience will remember it. So I can definitely advise people or give it a try. If you have a good prop, I'm not sure if I would recommend the ladder. <laughs> uh, but... But if you have a prop, go for it and, 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 and make it big. Use it. See if you can, can use it in, in, you know, in different ways because people will remember it. Uh, so that's one of the, the reasons why I use the ladder. And, and people already, I got one gig where they asked me, yes, yeah, Cyril, but you, we absolutely want you that you bring the ladder and do something with it. So, yeah, it becomes a little bit of, of your branding uh, it's funny. I, I I know I know some other speakers who have become so well known for their like their props and some of those things. They'll their 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 URL now is not so much their name. It's like it would be, in your case, it'd be the ladder guy. You know, it's it's they, they, they've become so well known for the the prop is so well known now that uh, the people kind of as they leave that place, often they won't remember your name, but they remember oh that was yes. the ladder guy, or oh, that was the 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 pilot, oh. or you know, I know like Peter Brandl for example, uh, who's a great speaker from Germany, he used like the the pilot side of thing comes in. All all the time so i'd love just to talk about some kind of resources tools and apps that you use for your, your creative work that you have as a, as a speaker and an author if you were to recommend one online resource or a tool or a mobile app like evernote that you find it is very useful for the creative work that you do what would that be it might sound a little bit the opposite of the creative work but one of the apps that are really like is things i don't know if you know things it's a kind of to-do app but it really helps me to empty my brain so every to-do that I have gets into uh, that app and it's built a little bit w around uh, the method of I think it's David Allen mm -hmm. uh, getting things done and it works really well for me so that's one of the apps that that I can recommend things yeah and if you were to recommend just one album and one book to our listeners what would they be uh, the book that immediately pops to mind would be made to stick from that and Chip Heat. Uh, I love their model how you can make uh, create a simple a simple message. Um, in terms of albums or, or podcasts, I have to say that I absolutely love your uh, the speaker summit that you're doing. I get a lot of inspiration from that. It's not that I'm calling with you, but that's one of the resources that uh, I use several times to you know to get some new inspiration and, and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I would say those two. And I want you to to imagine now, Cyril, that you woke up tomorrow morning and you have to start from scratch. So you have all the tools of your trade, all the all the knowledge, the skills that you've acquired over the years, but no one knows you and you know no one. What would you do? How would you restart things? I think first thing what I would do is try to get a free gig and bring a video team. And create create a, a short video where they see me speaking. You know, uh, in the assumption that, that you have those skills uh, and and start sending it to some people that I know or, or create a connection. I think that's one of the most important things. Yeah, as a, as a speaker that you need to have uh, good videos. That would be my, my first thing. And if people want to connect with you, to reach out to you, maybe to learn more about your speaking or, or, the, or the books and the other, some, some of the, the blog and the other things you've got going on, where's the best place for them to go and do that? Yeah, probably my website. So uh, you could go to Cyril Kortleven or I also have the, the English URL. It would be Cyril Short Life. If you translate my name, Kortleven, it would mean Short Life. So I also use it uh, a few times in my presentation. So if you go to Cyril Short Life, you can find all kind of inspiration. Well, Cyril, I hope you don't have a short life. I hope you have a very, very long life and you live to those hundred years and you get to experience that uh, those goals and everything that you're going to work working on that very last day thank you so much for coming on today and i, I look forward to I'm gonna, i know I, we're going to be speaking at an event together very soon in singapore and i'm looking forward to getting to to see you speak on stage absolutely it was a pleasure thanks a lot james hey james daly here again and if you're interested in living a more creative life then i'd love to invite you to join me as i share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.